What's up, bodybuilding fans? Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle news update. The Vancouver Pro Show took place this past weekend, even though it might have been overshadowed a little by the Chicago Pro Show. The bottom line, however, is that there were some quality competitors here, even though the lineup might have been uh, a little more sparse. There was 12 guys in the lineup. I felt that the competition here in Vancouver might have been deeper than in Chicago. In Chicago, we had some good guys in the top two, three spots, but it wasn't that deep. I think we had a good five guys deep here in Vancouver. Let's start with the winner right off the bat, Lucas Ostadol. We've seen him over the years. I've watched this guy uh, grow up in front of me, so to speak. Bill Comstack, uh, who used to work for Muscle Development, uh, and I worked together, and he shot this guy back in the day before he was even a pro. And I've And I saw some muscle and density and conditioning on this guy that I have never seen. He reminds me of Andreas Munzer. And Andreas Munzer didn't have the greatest physique, but he was the hardest guy always on stage. I mean, there was no one more shredded than him. And that's when Lucas Ostadol nails his conditioning, that's, he's Andreas Munzer of the, of the modern era. He's got striations upon striations. His glutes, not only do they get striated, but they get like fibery striated. And he likes to even oscillate them a little. No pun on his last name, Oscillate, but uh, on stage. And he does uh, some interesting maneuvers on stage as well. He has some interesting acrobatics he does and some stretching moves. And he puts his head, his foot over his head. And he, he knows he has very good body awareness and body control. And that's impressive on stage. When you can control, even though, you know, you might not have the prettiest physique, if you bring tremendous conditioning and you have good ability to present what you have, that raises your game up tremendously, and it gives you a very professional look to uh, to your physique on stage. And sometimes, you know, you beat guys that are actually better than you because you you are able to show your gifts better and hide your weaknesses. Whereas there's a lot of guys who have more gifts maybe than the rest of the competition, but they don't know how to they don't have to exploit those, and they don't know how to hide their weaknesses. And so, a lot of times, you know, you look at pictures after, and you're like, how did this guy win? But the bottom line is that you have to be there in that front row to really get an understanding of, of why he won. And I'm sure Luke as well, in video and in pictures, his conditioning does show you're not getting a true appreciation for it unless you're right there in person. Uh, I've, I've seen it and I've witnessed it firsthand and I, and I know exactly what it looks like in person and, and the pictures just don't capture it. There are a couple shots, the back double bicep, that you can kind of see it. But if you were to go like exclusively on the pictures, you'd be like, this guy can't. This guy didn't win the show, you know. Um, you know, probably, you know, one of the the most impressive guys, and I think you know, probably one of the guys with the most hype going into the show had to be Alexis Rolone. A lot of people know him. He has you know two last names, Alexis Rivera Rolone, but we know him. Uh, the guy who won the you know NPC Nationals, Alexis Rolone from Puerto Rico, and he um, is one of the most dangerous guys in this lineup in my mind. He's got the most tools. I think he could have been a little dialed in a little better for this show. I, I think last year we saw him dialed in a little a little tighter. And had he done that, I think he would have certainly beaten uh, Lucas because I think he's got a better structure and he's got better more muscle than he does. But I think he left the door open a little bit here. Alexis is a true talent. I, this is a guy who could certainly work his way up into being a, a super top competitor, you know, possibly even a top, you know, top six, top eight Olympian at some point if he continues to make improvements. He has the tool set that you need to go far in the professional ranks of bodybuilding. And once again, Lucas beats him because Lucas shows his physique off better. He comes in more dialed. And Alexis leaves the door open a little bit, you know, in the conditioning department. But, I, I you know, like I said, this is a guy who, you know, can show up next week and, 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 and win a show easy. I mean, here's a – there's only a few guys out there that actually have the tool set that, you know, structurally – to win shows on a regular basis, and Alexis certainly fits that bill. Now, Josh Wade is, is, is what I call the workhorse. No one works harder than Josh Wade. He's always in great shape. He doesn't have the prettiest uh, structure, but his conditioning is always impeccable. He, hit, he knows how to execute the mandatory poses. He's getting a lot of stage confidence in himself now because he's been doing a lot of shows. My, my worry is that he's going to do too many shows and his body's going to start getting worse. I, I don't think this is the best Josh Wade we saw all season. But I think from a conditioning standpoint, it was really good. So Josh, you know, comes in third here by virtue of the fact that he's, he's just ultra-conditioned here. 
and he's a hardcore guy. And, and he's another guy you don't really, you can't get a good grip about how good he is unless you see him in person because his conditioning comes out even better. You, what you do is you see in pictures, you just see his structural flaws and you're not seeing what he brings to the table in terms of gifts and which is his amount of muscle he carries and the way he presents this muscle and obviously the conditioning he brings as well. So if you look at these top three guys, all three of them, including Alexis, even though he wasn't his best, were all in terrific shape. So this top three, in my mind, is, is certainly better than the top three in, in, in Chicago, with the, with the exception of the fact that I think Lockett and Sergio were better than this whole lineup, and I think they would have been one-two here in this lineup as well. In fourth place, you know, Ian Valliere is probably, in my mind, the most impressive guy with the, the most tool set uh, of anyone in the lineup. He's structurally phenomenal. He's put on an enormous amount of muscle since I first saw him turn pro at the uh, Latin American Amateur Olympia in uh, Alcapulco, Mexico. And he's improved every single year. And this is a guy who structurally can hang also with the big boys. Uh, I don't know. Something is a little off. I don't know if he was a little flat here. Um, maybe his posing wasn't quite as good as I, I, I thought. I saw some pictures of him last week, and I was like crazy impressed. I was so impressed that I actually put it on my Instagram, and I very rarely put pictures of other people on there unless they're my clients or myself. But it was like a most muscular crab shot that just has a lot of density, a, a lot of great muscle. He's a guy, you know, I've been saying it for about a year or two now, that it's going to be a, a definite, you know, he'll be in that Olympia top six, dare I say, uh, in another couple of years, I believe. I think he's, if he, assuming he doesn't get hurt or nothing happens to him health wise, this is a guy who is just improving the right way, slowly but surely putting the muscle in the right places. He's got a small waist, he's got good wide shoulders. He structurally can hold a lot of muscle on his body uh, without it, you know, ruining his shape. I probably would have had him a couple places higher. I, I would have had him over Josh Wade, and I probably would have had him over Alexis Rivera because I think his conditioning was better. I don't think anyone would have complained if Ian Valier had finished second in this lineup. And you know what? You probably can make a case for the guy winning. Even though Lucas was just tremendously conditioned, Ian structurally is better than him. So I think it's a, a fair placing for Ian, but I think at the same time that no one would have complained had he been higher. And that's that's a tremendous feather in his cap. That you know He might be the, the most, uh, I guess you could say, potent guy in this lineup in the sense that the, the guy who may be the, the highest impact competitor in this Vancouver Pro. Because I think he comes away with this from this show with like the most potential, especially moving forward. Now, finishing in the fifth was Ronaldo Gary, who also looked really good. This guy's got also a great tool set. He just, you know, he ran into some guys that were really good, but his conditioning was was tremendous. If you look at these top five, all five guys had striated glutes. They were all in terrific shape. Way better than in way better than the lineup we saw in Chicago from a conditioning standpoint. And that you don't see that very often. How many, how many pro men's open shows do you see where the top five guys are all ultra conditioned you know almost to the point of like you know being perfect you know like i said i think alexis could have been a little I've, i think he could have been a little harder but he still was tremendously conditioned let's not face it i'm not i'm not criticizing him whatsoever i'm being giving a lot of constructive criticism here because i think he could be better than he was but this is a great top five and i think that um the fact that it occurred on the same weekend as Chicago Pro tells you that there are a lot of good open men's pro competitors out there because they were able to field two shows and give you two great shows on the same day. And that says a lot. You know, if anyone wants to say that men's bodybuilding is dying, uh, I challenge you uh, <laughs> to show me where because we're seeing some tremendous uh, competitors out there. We're seeing good top five lineups. And, and if we can do it and field it on the same week, imagine if all these guys were combined into one show, who would have finished where? That would have been some virtual, you know, pose down that we could have set up and, and try to figure out. And we never would have able to been able to do it in 100 years if we tried. But it's good for bodybuilding. Uh, congratulations to Lucas Ostel going back to yet another Olympia. Uh, he is a testament to the fact that hard work, okay, practicing your posing, dieting hard, sacrificing pays off with the win here and bragging rights to say I beat some super great competitors probably some future you know stars in the making uh, congratulations Lucas and everyone in Vancouver I'm Dave Palumbo with an RX Muscle news update